Hello everyone, this is Dr. Marrero from Math Topics. Today's video is about how can we approach one of the most important calculus topics, um, calculus ideas, continuity. This is something that we can approach at early ages. I'm talking about middle school. How can we move the students or the learners from simple ideas that later on will engage the students in a more complex process of understanding? This is the series, uh, How Do I Teach Math? How Do I Learn Math? Let's see and let's start talking about continuity. What is the primary idea of continuity in mathematics. You, you, you can teach that at a very uh, early age. As soon as the students, for example, in eighth grade, they um, start learning the concept of a function. And I know that in eighth grade curriculum, at least in the United States, uh, the students are start learning the, the, the function definition and they start learning the linear function, uh, the y equal mx plus b. But what is the primary idea? You can teach without naming calculus or without naming any other complex subject that is your pencil moving without lifting your pencil. This is this is the first idea of continuity. Okay, that's the first idea. And complex ideas start from very simple ideas. No? And the vocabulary in teaching mathematics is critical. Why? Because if you do not lift your pencil here, okay. You can say it in multiple ways, but I prefer that the math teachers, they use the word continuity. Why? Because when you dominate the curriculum that is coming and the evolution of the mathematics, the students will be facing in high school and even college, depending the path, uh, that is the word that we have to use. We do not leave the pencil. This is something that is coming like this. And you can explore you can explore infinity. You can explore ideas like infinity. You can explore idea like a minus infinity. And you can move the students through uh, the that visualization, that image to into uh, into the coordinate system. You can move the students all the way to the coordinate system. And then you create the, the, the full picture of what is coming for the students. That's in middle school. And in middle school, uh, the students will be moving little by little until they f they start taking precalculus. And when they start taking precalculus, um, they, they're going to add to this idea that the function uh, does not have holes, okay? So that we don't have here some, let me use the eraser. We don't have holes right there. So look at the, the process from middle school, from the idea of not lifting your pencil and to the pre-calculus content that they talk about no holes. What else? Look at all the process. And then in calculus, the student face for the first time a particular notation, the limit of the function when the x is approaching to a value. 
is equal the function value for that particular x. Look at the complexity from the very beginning. Eh? Look at it. And how can we read this complex structure? We can say here that when x get closer to z, and, and look at the, the words that we're using, when x is getting closer to z, we are now saying that x is equal to z, and this is the limit idea that we're now discussing in this video, we can do it in another video. When x is getting closer to z, the function f of x gets closer to f of z. It's an approximation idea, okay? The way to read the structure. And how you connect that primary idea uh, that I use the eraser and I use the, the holes or uh, to prove continuity or when we do not have continu uh, a continuous function with that structure. This is our mission as a teachers of mathematics. Um, even if you are not a professional math teacher or you, you want to teach your, your children or you want to, to help your children, that structure, how can we read that structure in mathematics? And this is another topic of, of this channel. Mathematical structures. How can we read that? It's when we are getting closer to a C, a C is a number, it's a value, a value of that x-axis that we took the students uh, through it, when the x, the, the neighbors are getting closer to C, the function is getting closer to f of C. Look at the evolution of the idea. No lifting the pencil, no holes. The mathematical equation that you see right there, written in terms of limit. How can we translate structures in math, limit of the function? What is the meaning of x approaching to c, getting closer to c, not equal c? And this is critical for limit. The function f is getting closer to f of c. We have to have this clear when we teach mathematics and when we teach pre-calculus and when we teach math 8th grade or math in middle school. We need to have that clear and we need to explore. We need, we need to get the students and, and put the students right there inside the image that they can see very closer the image without holes or with holes or with jumps in order to understand the structure later on. What else? Then the final destination. The final destination of that initial idea in an analysis class I'm gonna write it in blue here for you for all epsilon greater than zero there exist mm -hmm. some delta positive such that the actual value of, of x minus c or the distance between x and that c that is Something very close, very right there. 
is a neighbor of X is less than delta. And this implies that f of x, another distance, the input minus f of c, the output, is less than that initial epsilon. A math teacher must have clear the final destination of the concept or the idea that is teaching. It doesn't matter if you're teaching elementary school or you're teaching middle school or you're teaching high school algebra. Doesn't matter. You must know. It's your responsibility to know what is the final destination because you're creating people you're shaping knowledge. You're creating people with knowledge in a particular subject. And this is when when we have a as a student we have a not a good experience learning a topic or learning a subject. It's when we make decisions that are not correct. Some of our some of the subscribers of math topics um wrote that in, in one of the comments that he or she was thinking that was not good at math because the experience learning math. And I appreciate all those comments that you have done. I really appreciate them. I read them seriously and take them carefully in consideration because this is a family of learning. This is the final destination. Epsilon greater than zero. And this is when measurement comes to play. What is that epsilon that is positive? It's a measurement. It can be this uh, pen epsilon, or can be half of the pen, or can be one-fourth of the pen, or can be one-tenth of the pen. It can be any measurement. It's a very... It's a very Powerful idea, epsilon greater than zero. So it's a measurement. Can be this measurement. So we have another delta, another value positive. That the distance between x minus c, the distance between x and c, which is x minus c, the actual value, is less than delta. And this is when when number sense comes to play and when when the students learn common uh, number sense in elementary when they start with the with the natural numbers the whole numbers the fractions the rational numbers the rational numbers the idea of infinity but it's not only the idea of infinity it's also the that the student understand infinity in a set of value, in a set between, I always use zero to one. Zero to one. How many numbers are in there? The student usually, when they, they know the, the infinity, they say, no, we have infinity numbers. And, and this is the idea that we're going to use for limit, and this is the idea that we're going to use for continuity and this is the idea to to learn limited the limit structure right there that we have and this is the idea that we're going to use to understand the epsilon greater than zero and the delta greater than zero okay that idea that between two numbers we also have one number and you're getting ready not only for calculus, you're getting ready for math analysis. Uh, this is the video today. It's just an exploration of the this beautiful idea of continuity and how can we start uh, creating the foundation of this idea since the students are in middle school. Um, I hope that you like the video and I want to thank, uh, thank you for uh, 
um, being part of the math topics. Thank you and welcome to the new subscribers. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to share your ideas. I have I have read a beautiful comments about how to learn and how to teach mathematics. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.